to the show. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, is under investigation. That's according to the Wall Street Journal over how it approved the Boeing 737 MAX planes that have now suffered two deadly crashes. The 737 MAX has been grounded around the world. This investigation will focus on the first crash from October when a Lion Air flight from Indonesia plunged into the Java Sea and killed 189 people. Boeing shares are down more than 1% Monday. They're down more than 12%, though, since the more recent Ethiopian Airlines crash that killed 157 people. Tom Foreman is following this story from Washington, and Mary Schiavo is in South Carolina. Mary was inspector in general, inspector general at the U.S. Transport Department. She now represents families of airline crash victims and has current investigation or litigation pending against Boeing. Tom, I'm going to come to you first. What do we know exactly about this investigation? What not, are not the details? A, not a tremendous amount right now. The Wall Street Journal here is reporting mm -hmm. that the Department of Transportation, which is the umbrella group for the Federal Aviation Administration, is looking into the question of whether or not the FAA basically allowed Boeing to oversee too much of the approval process, gave it too much leeway in saying, yes, we conducted these tests, they were fine, yes, we checked the system, it worked fine, and that this was used to sort of rush along the development of the MAX line of planes out there. Boeing is not really saying anything about this. The FAA is saying, look, we've always been about safety, we followed our normal procedures, but the Wall Street Journal is suggesting that somehow this led to a short-circuiting of the safety process, Julia. Mary, come in here, please, because you point out very importantly that when we're looking at these kind of investigations, you can have both civil and you can also have criminal. What's your take? Well, I think they're probably doing exactly both of those things. Um, mm. You know, the Office of Inspector General uh, back in 2015 issued a report on this very program on the FAA officially designating most of their inspections to manufacturers and to airlines. And in that report, they said, and they wouldn't know until at least 2016 exactly how much oversight personnel they needed over Boeing, and that Boeing did about 90% of its own inspection. And the inspector general already reported that in a prior report. So announcing this investigation, or I guess, uh, the, you know, I guess it's been leaked, it hasn't been officially announced, I mean, indicates that they've taken it to another level because they already reported to Congress the great lapses and the really uh, shirking of its responsibilities to Congress, and that didn't get uh, anybody excited until now so when they issue a subpoena and they take it to the justice department that usually means it's a criminal investigation a subpoena would mean they're looking at for example false state statements to the government in the uh, approval process whether they didn't do all the testing but said they did anything that isn't accurate or would be fraudulent reporting their uh, certification process to the federal aviation administration and then the civil side of their investigation, they will be going one step further. They will lo be looking at the FAA process, which they've reported on many times, sounding the alarm bell and saying it's not adequate. But what needs to be changed again? And I would assume that Congress will hold hearings. So uh, that's usually what happens after a major investigation by the Office of Inspector General. So there's two critical things for me here. One, has the FAA lost its bite here, particularly when you're telling me that actually Boeing approves its own and appoints okay. its own inspectors here. And Congress signed off on that. So there's one question yes, here did. of whether and what role the FAA can actually play in this investigation, particularly when last week we were saying, why hasn't the FAA grounded these flights when other regulators around the world has? I mean, it, it's quite exactly. shocking, actually, surely. Yes, it is. And, and you make an excellent point. I mean, you see what, uh, you know, the, the that is so obvious to so many people except the FAA. When the FAA was making those statements before the grounding of the planes, and they were saying, we don't have any evidence to ground the planes, what they were saying is we don't have any evidence because they weren't on top of the inspection process, according to um, Office of Inspector General reports that even predate the Ethiopia crash and, uh, and that the in Office of Inspector General had already started this investigation apparently after Lion Air. So the FAA in some ways is being honest and there's one telltale giveaway here. 
the uh, FAA after the Ethiopia crash issued a statement saying well, we're gonna we're gonna make Boeing do these changes by April that letter was issued March 11 the date of the subpoenas according to the Wall Street Journal March 11 well, wow. and Julia and Julia may let me point out one other thing about this this process politically has been going on in Washington for a long time now this sense of the business community saying we should be calling our own shots we look after our own interest we don't need so much government oversight and certainly under President Trump one of his big pledges was I'm going to push regulation further away from you and let business decide so in this case we're talking about the FAA but it comes in a big climate here of business pushing to say we can regulate ourselves we don't really need your fingers messing around in our pie. I, I mean, that's quite astonishing to me that in this kind of situation where customers' safety potentially is at risk, businesses are more powerful than the regulators, yeah. or perhaps we shouldn't be surprised here given the lobby power that they have. Well, yes, Julia, but the other thing that the businesses will do, particularly in aviation, as I'm sure Mary will agree, they'll point to the extraordinary safety record of aviation, and they'll say, look at how well we're doing. We don't need you messing around in this. We're doing a great job. And we have these catastrophic accidents, but the overall safety record has been better. So that, I think, confuses the debate about, about how much safety is involved here and who would be responsible for it.